When we install a car audio system, there are many different wire connections that we need to make and many different tasks that we need to complete. How do we mount the fuse in the engine compartment? How do we get the power wire through the firewall? What do we need to do when we are connecting several amplifiers? And where do we run wires when there just isn't enough room along the door sills? Let's get in to running the wires for my dad's car in this video from the Sound Quality Daily Driver Project. So we've got all the different wire and gear and the accessories that we need. First thing I wanna do here is I wanna determine my layout on the amp rack. I know that I need my power distribution to be somewhere over here. So here's what I've come up with. I'm gonna have the power distribution block right here and then the ground distribution block right here. Now, just because I need to send a couple of these wires over to this amplifier, I'm going to have a wire that needs to cross over here and this is actually a cool idea that I've seen from my friends over at five star what you do is you make yourself a little spacer block like this it's not attached yet it allows the distribution block to be lifted up slightly higher that way the wire that comes out of this can go up and over the others without interfering so we have a plan here the first thing I need to do is I need to get my distribution blocks mounted onto the amplifier rack and for that I'm using some CA glue along with fasteners Next up, I need to attach the wires between the distribution block and the amplifiers, and I have a process for this that includes stripping the wire, adding some wire ferrules, and then protecting it with TechFlex. I have a link to a couple of different videos more in detail about this process that you can find down in the video description. With all of the main power wires connected, I now need to attach the RCA signal wire between the main amplifier and the subwoofer amplifier. Next, I'm drilling a bunch of holes that allow me to use zip ties to mount the wires on the front and on the back of this amplifier rack. I actually had to mount some of the wires around the back side in order to allow clearance for the wire to actually go from the distribution blocks over to the other amp. Here you can see that gap that I was avoiding by having the wiring going around the back side. Now in a second here, I'm gonna show you guys something that I ended up having to do in this project that I really, really didn't want to have to do. But first, I wanna take a quick second to thank our monthly channel sponsor, Audio Control. For the subwoofer amplifier, I'm using this guy right here, the Audio Control ACM-1.300. Coming in at 300 watts and two ohms, this is a great amplifier for a simple bass add-on to a system as it includes features that allow us to integrate with a factory audio system. If you look at this connection right here, this is actually a speaker level input, which means when we use this amplifier, we don't need a line output converter in order to take the factory speaker level into this amp. Additionally, this amplifier has technology built in that allows us to restore the bass signal that a lot of times the stock audio system will remove. To learn more about that feature in this amplifier, check out some links I put for you guys down in the video description. So I ended up having to do something that I was hoping not to have to do, and that is to actually pull the seats out of the inside. The reason I ended up doing this is if we look at the door jam here, this particular piece of plastic, if you can see right here, it has like almost like a blocking 
blocking wall. So you can't easily just run a bunch of wires through here, especially large zero gauge wire. This is something I've been noticing more and more in vehicles lately. I feel like the manufacturers are doing this on purpose because they know that this is an easy path to just run a wire through and they want to try to stop it. So what we need to do is we need to pull back the carpet some and go through this low tucked point here. And in order to do that, it's just better and easier to ultimately pull the seat out and then we can push this back much more and get a better routing path. The other reason I don't mind doing this so much is it's good to pull out the seats every once in a while and really do a nice deep cleaning underneath, really vacuum everything, get all that extra crud out of there. And there are usually parts of the center console here that you can't really reach normally with the seat in the way. So while the seats are out, I like to do a little bit of extra cleaning and protect it. I think this is important. It hits me right in the feels when I see guys pull out seats out of a car and they don't take the time to just do a quick little vacuum and a quick clean. You might as well, all this stuff is out of the way. So I'm gonna pop all of this trim off, pull it out of the way, that way I can fold my carpet back and start wiring. So I took care of the most daunting task first. I made a hole in the firewall here on the driver's side. I looked around, there were no existing locations that I could go through. So what I had to do is I had to check on both sides of the firewall here, make sure that there was clearance. I drilled a hole and then I installed this grommet. Within the engine bay, you can see the other side right there. Here's a nice trick for you guys. You can take a larger zip tie like this. Hard to see on camera, but with this long stiff zip tie, it's easy to put it through the hole there. And then we can fish it out the other side. So what we can do is we can use some electrical tape and tape our power wire to this. That way we can pull it back up through the engine compartment where we want it to run. I'm paying attention so that the wire isn't near anything that can move or anything that gets hot. And I'm actually going to run it right along this factory harness that comes over here to the positive battery terminal. I'm gonna go through this same hole hole on the battery holding bracket. Now, since this is in the engine compartment, I wanna put something a little bit more robust on it. I'm going to use this wire loom here. Now, applying wire loom can be somewhat of a pain in the butt, especially to longer runs of wire, unless you have this tool here. With this tool, I first open it up like so, I then insert the wire inside of it and turn that piece back in place. And then I can easily and quickly slide that loom right onto the wire. So I've got this all wrapped up with tape. I've left myself plenty of extra wire because now I need to figure out where the fuse block is actually going to be mounted. So I've taken a scrap piece of cardboard and I've cut out a rough shape here. And now I can transfer this to a piece of plastic. Now you could just use a jigsaw, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I'm gonna be using the router to make these cuts nice and clean. So now that I have that that plate made and you can see that it bolts up using a factory bolt location. I can determine exactly where I want this, get this mounted, I can connect this wire to this side and then I'll make a new wire that's going to connect to the battery. Whammy bam and now we are mounted up with the fuse holder. I've got my wire ran through here and then I've also got the wire connected to the positive battery terminal. This way once we are ready, I can attach the fuse, insert everything, and we are good to go. But we're not gonna attach the fuse quite yet because we're still working inside the car. Now we're making some major progress. I've got the power wire ran here. You can see that I've secured it in a couple of different spots along the way in order to hold it in place with these special patches. It's usually not an issue for running close to speaker wires, but in general, the best practice is you do wanna keep some distance between your speaker wires and if you do have to come close to the speaker wires, you want to try to do so at an angle. So that runs all the way back here to the back of the vehicle to our power distribution. Now in the meantime, I've also ran my speaker wires for this side of the car. I used that same trick I showed you guys earlier of using the zip tie to pull the wires through this general area here and fish them through. So I've got two wires fished up here, one for the tweeter and one for the mid-range. And then I also did my wire through the door Molex here. Now this was definitely the most complicated part because this door Molex, it's not just a tube, it actually has a wire harness on each side. So they're tied up for right now just so that they're out of the way, but I do have my aftermarket speaker wire ran through into the door for my mid base. This was definitely the hardest part of the process and I wanted to make sure that I captured it in detail. I think I'm gonna make a separate video all about how to do that. Let me know if that's something that you're interested in seeing. There is one more thing though, since I have the carpet removed and the seats removed, I figured why not throw down a little bit of sound treatment on the large flat areas 
the areas that need it the most. So I did that really quick. So now I have completely ran all the speaker wires on the passenger side of the vehicle, following the same techniques that I used on the driver's side. But on the passenger side, I've also ran my RCA wire here that connects to the head unit up in the front of the vehicle, which provides signal to the amplifier. And then I've also ran the wire for this, the ACR3 from Audio Control. This connects to the amplifier so I can switch my presets and control the level control on what I tell the amplifier to do. So I can use it for volume, or in this case, I'm gonna use it for subwoofer level. Now I've also run the remote turn on lead here. This is connected to the aftermarket head unit it switches on when the radio turns on and it's going to tell the amps to turn on. But what I wanna do is I'm going to use another ferrule and these are a little bit different looking because these have insulation on them. I'm gonna use this along with this special tool here to put a ferrule on these wires. Again, this and all the other tools that you're seeing in this video are linked down in the video description. So I had a couple more things I had to finalize. I added this ground wire for the main distribution block that is on a factory ground here. And then now that everything's good to go with that, I added in the main fuse here and bolted it in. Now I just need to add everything back above the battery in this vehicle. Now, before we completely reinstall the whole interior, we definitely wanna do a power test to make sure that our amplifiers are powering up as they should. So I've got everything reconnected. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the ignition here. Radio turns up and I heard the amplifier power up as well. So we are good to go. Now, what if your amplifiers didn't turn on? What would you want to check? Well, you would want to use a multimeter and you would want to test and make sure that you have 12 volts on the remote in as well as the constant on each of the amplifiers. If you don't have 12 volts on the remote in, that means that something is going on with your source. So you want to check that out. And if you don't have 12 volts here, it means one of your fuses is already blown and you definitely want to look into that as being a potential issue. So you'd want to check each of these different connections to figure out where you do have 12 volts in order to determine the culprit. It's also a good idea that normally at this point you would have probably connected your speakers already too, so you could start right into doing an audio test. But for me, that's the next phase of this build. That's right, this build is focused on sound quality and I have the perfect speakers picked out, something that's quite new and something that I haven't used before. I'm super excited for the upcoming video where I'll show you guys what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build custom A-pillars for the front of the car and how to make custom speaker adapters for the woofers that are going into the doors. I do lessons, product overviews, and build log videos like this one. So if you guys wanna catch more of this build log or those other videos, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Special thanks to Audio Control for being a monthly channel sponsor. Don't forget to check out the links to the ACM-1.300 down in the video description. Also, a special thanks to Lonnie, Ali, William, Marcos, Michael, Steve, Emmanuel, and Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. As always, my friends, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the the next video.